Hi, I'm Annika Lidne. Welcome to the Swedish Startup Session, this time with Jon Schölander of Bird Corp. And you're going to hear some amazing stuff about Swedish entrepreneurship, about being brave, about being courageous, and some kick-ass technology. We'll be right back. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas the way the heart. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Claim you to achieve. Please believe. This ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East or Africa. Bitch, you be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all. You ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas. You ain't hard. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Claim you to achieve. Please believe. This ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East or Africa. Bitch, you be thanking God. This is Sweden. This is the Swedish Startup Sessions. Welcome back. We're here with John Schölander. And hello. hello. You're the CEO of BERT. Yes. Or is it BERT Corp? BERT. No, Bert. it's, it's BERT. Uh, common misconception. We actually started by having this idea that we should be a brand with many products. Uh-huh. And so, so, so there's some great confusion that people think we're named by Bert because we branded everything like, you know, rich yeah. by Bert, me, which is by Bert. And we're kind of moved away from that, uh, but the Bert domain is, of course, both taken and incredibly expensive, so yeah. we haven't gotten there. But I'm going to buy it. <laughs> One day, yeah. you'll go. So tell me a little about yourself. What's your background? You said before we we spoke here um, that this is actually your fifth startup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my background going way back is that I'm a complete uh, geek, uh, computer geek. I started coding when I was ten years old, Ooh. and during the dot com, I'm thirty four, so, yeah. so that's that's way back. Uh, um, during the dot-com boom, I, I did some homepage hacks, hacks for some companies and kind of earned some money in that and actually invoiced a lot more than any 17-year-old should be able to, to do, but that, that was kind of fun. I started physics engineering at Chalmers, but I dropped out after a while uh, because I, I didn't really, it was kind of too much, uh, um, too little time being able to kind of dig into what was really interesting. Uh, yeah. And then. As dropping out, I, I um, um, from my contacts, I, I, I joined a, a company called Red Message, and this was '99. And when I had been there a couple of weeks or a number of weeks, they, they raised a huge Series A round uh, for 138 million Swedish kronor from Goldman Sachs and a number of other investors. And during the course of eight months, we grew from 12 people to 75 people and opened offices in six countries and it was yes, crazy days. So I learned a lot about what you shouldn't do, okay. <laughs> uh, which are good lessons, uh, and then kind of moved, uh, and kind of got bitten by that kind of culture, right? Yeah. Because I, I've always been uh, both a geek, but I'm always interested in, in, in more the uh, application of what, what you're supposed to do with, the, with whatever you're trying to do. I'm not, I'm not the kind of algorithm geek, I want to tweak an algorithm, I want to get past an obstacle. Mm. Uh, for me, it started with cheating in games, uh, kind of not having the mot motorical skills of a ten uh, of an adult when you're ten. Yeah. Uh, the games were too hard, so I dug into the source code and kind of gave myself uh, a you know, as an extra zero on the number of lives. So it was kind of interesting, uh, uh, and always had this kind of idea to create something bigger. Mm. Uh, so, so I, I came to a, an environment where, where out of necessity, you you have to in startups give a lot of responsibility to people who doesn't necessarily deserve them, right? Yeah. So you have young people having a huge responsibility, and that that worked really well for me. I'm kind of the person who you can give a, a weird and difficult undefined task, and I'll do the best of it. Uh, so that kind of stuck with me, and that was interesting. I didn't really fancy myself being a careerist at all. Mm. Uh, which is what everybody does in this world, yeah. <laughs> uh, sadly. Um, so that's kind of my background, uh, and then I kind of worked in uh, different startups in parallel to finishing my studies, so mm -hmm. that took some time though. And then mm -hmm. after leaving uh, my studies, I felt mature somewhat to, to start my own company. So I actually started a peer-to-peer -peer video company that was mm -hmm. incubated at Shalmash Innovation, yeah. uh, one of the universities here have an incubator. And did that for two years. We were at the most five employees or something. Uh, that didn't really pan out. Peer-to-peer -peer video is, as most people know by now, 
not the greatest idea and, and kind of tough, hard to 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 kind of get going. Comparing, you know, Spotify to Vogler, there's a reason that Spotify is the yeah. hugely successful computer company. Um, I kind of left that and joined Bert. Okay. And so I've been here for two and a half years. Yeah. And I started as the CTO and I transitioned over to CEO because I have this knack for organization and process and kind of think that is. Yeah. So tell me about Bert. What 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 do you do? Yeah. So so we do advertising technology. Uh, what we actually do is we have created a, a, a platform for huge data analysis where we collect data both on tracking ads and, and uh, uh, putting that together with website data and audience data and campaign data, revenue data. And then we create, uh, on top of that, we built a number of tools. Uh, our, our primary tool right now is, is a, a service called Rich, which is essentially a Google Analytics for banner advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, focusing on the banner. The difference being that you could probably do a lot of what we do uh, in Google Analytics, but you will not get the audience data, the, the, the banner tracking data, and everything that happens before the click and stuff like that, right? So we, we do that, and, and, and our service is focusing kind of on an, uh, analytics on that. But the platform is, is uh, I think, our technical feat, which is uh, we, we collect massive amounts of, of data and then we kind of create huge, uh, we, we, in a huge uh, cluster we calculate that data into different re reports to give answers on, on uh, like what, what ads actually worked and, and why one thing into This summer... So it's a business intelligence tool. Yeah. This summer I retweeted a post, blog post um, with a title, uh, it's more likely that you will die in a plane crash than actually click on a banner <laughs> ad. And uh, my, my... I think that's true, that's not true. But yeah, actually, I, I had to, to turn, <laughs> turn off my, my uh, phone and my iPad because it was, you know, just pinging. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, the, the thing is that, 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 yeah, sure, when you have the, the clicks right now is at 0.1% yeah. on average, which is appallingly bad. The first banner that was ever created on the internet was an AT&T campaign. Uh, it was called uh, In the Future You Will. And, and the idea was basically, uh, for the whole campaign, was that in, in the future uh, AT&T will help you with stuff. They, the theme was something like, uh, have you ever sent a fax from the beach? In the future you will, and AT&T is the company that's going to bring it to you. Yeah. And so they had a banner ad that says, have you ever, ever clicked right here? And it was an arrow to a point. And it said, you will. And people actually click that. 70% of people yeah. saw that image click. So there was a huge click there. But nobody has ever seen an ad before. So it's no. kind of a novelty of that. And, and the, 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 the clicks on, on banners, they go down year over year. Yeah. It's kind of the banner blindness problem. However, we don't really care about the clicks. We, we're, not, we're, not to, we're not working with e-commerce. Uh, we'd like to work with e-commerce, but that's not where we started. Uh, but we think there's a lot of interesting things that is happening before the click. Okay. Like if you can look at Vogue or, or Wallpaper or, or Wired, yeah. I, I love my subscription of Wired, I am actually paying for advertising. Mm -hmm. I, I would not like Wired without the advertising. In the last Wired I found three new TV shows that I immediately started downloading on BitTorrent, so not, not good for them, but, <laughs> but th that was advertising. That was advertising that actually worked. Yeah. Uh, and we know that we can create environments that work for advertising online. Mm -hmm. and the, the problem is that everybody's focused on this silly click, right? But if you're a, if you're a brand, if you're Coca-Cola, why the heck would you want someone to click your ad, right? Yeah. You want people to buy a cola. So you want brand awareness mm -hmm. and kind of brand likeness and things like that. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying mm -hmm. to create, by, by actually measuring what works and kind of focusing on, on changing toward what actually, what's actually better, we think that we're going to create an environment that is that is a lot better than it is today because it is it is really bad mm -hmm. and for for good reason disturbingly bad but we're trying to change it we know that you can change it if we look at, at so we've actually tracked campaigns on, on some sites in sweden that are usually successful and some of our campaigns has been running on on fever the fever cycle yeah which is an amazingly good uh, advertising space right yeah because it's 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 blog format and in between the blogs there are great ads big format that are relevant to that audience 
and very and, nice and like the clip through yeah layout. and very nice graphic and layout. it's yeah. lovely it's lovely it's the exact that is the equivalent on online of, of a fancy glossy magazine yeah, yeah. so it's really good and the click throughs on those if you want to use click through as, as kind of uh, success measure mm. is just through the roof yeah so so you can do that mm. and we've been working with our customers too because I, I feel that a lot of sites is it's like it's so cramming in ads that you hardly can find the content anymore and of course you, you leave. There, there is an assumption, there is this notion that there is uh, there is unsold inventory yeah. that you should monetize on and I think that's sort of where it started. What's interesting is that nobody really knows if you sell that extra ad space or you actually watering down the value of the rest of your ad. Yeah. Uh, so we're trying to answer things like that. Really interesting and, and that's quite uh, one of my questions is to all the startups, what's disruptive with your technology, and that sounds well, apart from, quite disruptive. Yeah, uh, apart from, from uh, trying to change, change the whole space, mm -hmm. I mean, the big idea here, here is to create an, an amazing user experience for yeah. them. Uh, there is a lot of tech problems, because we want to dig really deep in that, mm -hmm. area, really far down. And to do that, you need uh, cluster computing calculation that is just I, I can't even begin to tell you how complex that problem is yeah. if you want to dig through every facet of, of yeah. the data. So that, uh, that, that's actually, a, we're using, a, a, partly we're using as a database, a database called MongoDB, yeah. and created by a company in, in New York called Tengen, which is an amazing company. Uh, and so when we had created that database, we had a, a, a session sit down with them to kind of look through have we done things correctly. And so, so they had some, some interesting takeaways for us. One was that, okay, people who uh, have this, this size for their, their data clusters usually own their own hardware, guys. <laughs> and we're like, what? We can't be on Amazon? Uh, no, so, but we're still are, and that kind of, that's an interesting problem in itself, and, and also, also opportunity. Uh, but the second was that we're the, we're the company in the world which has the most insert in any MongoDB cluster. Wow. So it's like, we have massive inserts of data in our cluster. Yeah. We're not, well, I mean, we're, we're, when it comes to inserts, we have more inserts in our data cluster per second than Foursquare. Wow. Which is pretty good. So, so we're actually on the bleeding edge of, of, uh, of big data. Tech. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of a technical feat. But I would actually say that our, uh, our disruptiveness comes to, twofold in. Firstly, we, we focus immensely on the product. We want to create a great product that is just amazing. You know, you want to you want to create a product, a product where where your customers say, I, "I want to marry this product. Mm. I'll divorce my wife and marry your product." <laughs> That's what we want to do. And and I think that that the other thing is that we're we're in we're not technologists. We didn't come out of technology. Mm. I did, but our company didn't. Yeah. Our founders are both in advertising. Yeah. So we're focusing heavily on the user. Yeah. The user experience. There is supposed. I mean, you can automate great advertising because the, I mean, there always has to be someone who is really, uh, really kind yeah, of I mean, creating the idea, person, their idea the, and execution yeah. and doing that well. So we want to create tools that helps the person. Mm. So that's kind of how we think about things. Which, which I think was. So we focus heavily on advertising in yeah. advertising technology, while while other advertising technology usually focus heavily on technology, yeah. which I don't, which I think created the, the situation we have today, where there can be seventeen redirects from the publishers from the media side to the actual ad being loaded, yeah. which is nuts. Yeah. yeah. So how many are, are working with Bert right now? Um, currently, we're twenty-ish people, mm -hmm. twenty-five. So I've lost count. Uh, and do you have any main competitors? Sure. Yeah. Not in Europe, no. uh, but there are some, some competitors there. And it kind of depends on what you want to define as mm. a competitor. There's no competitor that has our exact feature set, but our space is, uh, we usually get, get put in a, in a space that's called uh, data management platforms, because yeah. we have all these data assets that we manage. And in that space, there's, there's a number of, of competitors. But I would say, uh, when it comes to kind of looking at what works and what doesn't work, uh, there's like double verify, ad expose, and a number of others uh, in the US. Yeah. Uh, and are you a market basically in Europe then, when you have? Uh, we, we've started out in the Nordics because that's yeah. accessible, but we've been, we, we, we've been having customers all over the world. Actually, yeah. our latest customers is uh, in Canada. So, 
it sounds from my, my perspective that there must be enormous growth potential in, in the... It's an it's, insane market. Yeah. But it's also a winner takes all market and, mm. and the, the tough thing is that there's always a competitor that's going to have 10 times your resources. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we have actually had one of the, we started looking at going into uh, kind of ad bidding, ad exchanges. That's what, I'm not sure if this, the audience knows this, but one of the things that have been happening in the last five years is that, that ads are actually bought and sold on ad exchanges. So mm -hmm. instead of you booking in advance, You'll, you'll, you'll bid on an opportunity to expose an ad online. And so, so there's a company in, in, in New York called AppNexus and we met with them early on when we were kind of considering if we want to go into their space. Yeah. And they raised $10 million on day one of their company. Wow, that's crazy. They, they, they are an immense, amazing good team. Mm -hmm. And I think, think today they've raised more than $100 million mm -hmm. in total. Which Three leads to my next question. Um, how was your bird funded? Was it venture uh, cap money or, or um, bootstrapping? So or we started out with uh, angel money yeah. and actually put some money on ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, not myself, but <laughs> our founders. Uh, uh, and we started with angel money. Uh, mm -hmm. We had we had we have angels with deep pockets and they're willing to invest a lot of money. And they're actually investing in the large idea, so it yeah. wasn't a big problem for for them kind of investing in this. Um, and then this summer we uh, we raced around with industry funding. Uh huh. Uh, Is it the B round or C round? It's or? actually a convertible, so okay. it's not even an A round, mm -hmm. which might seem <laughs> crazy, but that's where we are. So kind of it's hard. Uh, it's hard having to explain that in advertising technology the A rounds are huge, mm -hmm. and so that's where we are. Uh, yeah. But it's 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 a convertible. Uh, a convertible round is a round where you take out a loan on your future round yeah. and that money converts to the round when you actually use it. Uh, so so we're, we're having a convertible for our official A round, uh, which is gonna, you know, I, that's how it works, right? You raise money every one or two years. Yeah. So. Are you looking uh, actively for investors? Because, I mean, right now is well, a Who is it? But yeah. <laughs> uh, no, not, not, we're not spending too much time on no. it and we're not worrying about that right now. We have a, an immensely ambitious uh, rollout plan and kind of execution plan mm -hmm. for what we want to do with this money, and we're focusing fiercely on that right now. Oh, you're in the black right now, or no, 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 no. no. <laughs> going to be for many years, but we make money, uh, yeah. and that's what's important. Right? Yeah. You, you, you want to make money the right way by the right business model, and so. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. I'm actually more worried about. Uh, Actually, I'm not too worried about this round. I'm, I'm worried about how to get the best leverage out of this money to mm -hmm. raise a huge round next time. Because we, we want to get in competition with, with the dragons, right? Yeah. Google, Microsoft, uh, all these Omniture, huge companies. And, and that rather requires resources, both in, in people and in money. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and how, how of, we have this crazy ambition. We, we make a good product and we, we were able to sell that product but, but these companies aren't in the black for many years. Mm. Uh, was it hard to convince industry funding sure. to get Nobody deserves, nobody at this company, uh, given their track record, deserves this money. <laughs> Not a single person in this company yeah. deserves uh, handling three and a half million dollars for a crazy idea. Yeah. But we have a good team. And I th I'm pretty sure that they are proud and confident in us, and I'm happy that they're willing to take that risk. But uh, it, it took some time to come in. And that's a huge run for being Sweden. It's a huge run. Yeah. Um, so what what are your your more short term goals other than taking over the world? <laughs> short term, uh, we're trying to uh, establish our sales process. In, but, better than before, improving mm -hmm. on that. We're trying to uh, move more of our money coming into the company, into uh, the, the business model we want to rely the company on. Mm -hmm. uh, basically a volume-based license or year over mm -hmm. year. Uh, we are trying to make sure that our technical platform can can take the next step in, in uh, when it comes to to kind of pressure data going into that platform. Uh, we, we're not hiring more engineers right now, we're trying to trim that team to work mm -hmm. uh, better. Uh, not that you shouldn't apply, uh, because we're always looking for great people, but we don't find that need as 
So there's a number of things. We actually have a five. I can't really go into the details, mm -hmm. but we have a we have, we have a plan of five goals that we want to attain attain to to be able to take the next. So. And and uh, do you have sales offices in other countries or you not yet? To, no. No. Or are you planning to to roll out like in the U.S. or? Sure. So that's one of the one of the things that we know we have to do. Mm -hmm. The next step, the next natural step for BERT is is moving into other markets. Yeah. Uh, the the Nordics market is, is clearly enough to sustain what we're doing right now, but not enough for the future. So. Mm -hmm. Sure. And you, you are, have your head office in Gothenburg, which is the Swedish yeah. second largest Sweden, town in Sweden. Do you see any uh, benefits compared to being in Stockholm? Some. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we actually founded, we could have founded our head office in Berlin or whatever. Yeah. I would actually like that. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't planned. The reason we're here is because all the f of the founding team is from Gothenburg. Mm. Uh, and then and ours also our angels are from Gothenburg. Uh, so that kind of worked out well. Yeah. And it, it, we learned going forward that we could actually recruit really well here. Because yeah. we didn't have to compete with the startups in Stockholm. Mm. So that was a nice thing. Yeah. And that is changing slightly because Spotify is actually focusing on their or putting more manpower into their office down here right now. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> But uh, that recruiting here, it's not hard being the coolest uh, startup or the coolest tech company in Gothenburg. Yeah. Uh, it's not that hard. In, in Stockholm, it's super hard. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was a good thing. Uh, we could get, get great talent for, for, uh, for good value. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, actually most of our first engineers, they, uh, they're not... Uh, um, they're at their second or third job right now, yeah. uh, and they actually lower their pay to come work for us. Mm -hmm. And I made I made sure of that because I wanted them to have the right incentive to start yeah. work, not not work for better pay or so. uh, and, and that wasn't that hard. Uh, the hard part is is kind of getting people actually understanding the crazy ambition you're having because yeah. we're not some consultancy that gets to 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 work in some boring project at some boring big company, right? Uh, and you have to be super efficient and super productive and that's kind of changing the mindset of people. That's much tougher than recruiting good people. So, what is the most important lesson that you have learned during your startup years? I get, I get years? that question. Actually, I do a lot of talks on, yeah. on our experience and, and kind of entrepreneurship and I get that question. I don't know. There's never a good answer to a question like that, but, but uh, I think we've focused heavily on culture, building a, I, I wanted to build a company that I wanted to work at. That's really free, that gives you, if you want to spend more time at your company's office than at home, then you're in a good space because mm -hmm. people are going to love that and, and sacrifice a lot for that company, right? So we tried to build that. So we focused heavily on culture. Uh, we focused heavily on, on thinking big. I think commonly in Sweden, people think more feature than yeah, they think small, kind of product yeah. or even a huge idea. And in Silicon Valley, they have this idea of, uh, of the thunder lizard, which is you want to become Godzilla who just races out of the sea and just eats up everybody, right? Uh, I, think that, I think that's an interesting analogy. And mm -hmm. to be that, you have to think, think completely out of the box and yeah. be, just think hugely from the start. And we've done that. We knew from start, I knew from start, I'm going to be, build a huge company. Mm -hmm. I didn't, th this wasn't a lifestyle choice for me. I could, I could easily learn a, uh, earn a lot more money doing a lifestyle choice. Yeah. I've, I've earned horribly bad over the last years, but I've had more fun than anyone else, so yeah. I'm happy with that. Gothenburg is a, is a city with rather few startups, but yeah, with yeah. some really exactly. big industries and big companies. And, what do you think they can learn from your experience and from the startup? The big work? companies want yeah. to learn from us. Uh, How do you say Volvo? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't really care about Volvo. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't think that's my mission. Uh, so, so, so uh, three weeks ago I visited the Silicon Valley uh, for a week and I went to all these amazing companies. Facebook, Sassel, uh, uh, a number of others. Interesting experience. And they are huge companies, hugely successful, with a culture much more like ours. Um, 
But I don't think that you can do that unless you're at that momentum that yeah. these companies have. And so I don't think that Volvo can go in here and think, okay, let's do this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not going to work. I mean, actually, they're, they're going to go bankrupt in zero time doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, because it wouldn't work with that type of people, right? You, you need persons who are able to kind of do that, take that responsibility, uh, run by themselves with a crazy idea and execute that much faster than you, than you anticipated them to do. And that's not, that's like, that's the 1% job. 99% of people won't do that. And Volvo and big companies are built for 99% of people. Yeah. That's why I'm not there, because yeah. they're not built for me. Uh, so that's kind of, I don't know, uh, the kind of openness in culture, I guess. I've actually, during a time where I was an IT consultant and worked out there, uh, I was super frustrated because I, did, what, I was used to a culture where you, you come up with an idea in the, in the, you know, at breakfast and you talk with your boss and they implement it up to lunch and it's live on the servers after that. I really care about myself and my company. I'm, I want to make the world a better place and I take a lot of kind of responsibility when it comes to people, but I don't care about big companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a libertarian in the sense that I think if they die, they probably deserve to. I have no idea why, why, why Sweden is still betting on Saab because I, I, they just pull the plug and let them die. They should be they dead should. 25 years ago. Yeah, of course. It says anybody who thinks otherwise is a dumbass. Yeah. You said you've, you've been recently to, to Silicon Valley. Uh, do you have um, what's your general view about starting a company in Sweden compared to other places in the world? Not particularly Silicon Valley, but you think it's better, worse? Uh, doesn't matter. I haven't started a company outside of Gothenburg, so I don't really know. Uh, I would suspect that there. If you can leverage a great community, you mm -hmm. should probably try to do that, if you need to. Uh, and I, I think that, that there are, clearly, we, we're trying to visit Silicon Valley often. We, mm -hmm. we were in TechCrunch 50 uh, way back, uh, actually before the company was, was founded, yeah. which isn't allowed, so we cheated on that. That was kind of interesting. No, you, you have a company, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, and so, so we've been visiting Silicon Valley frequently. And, and we do that because we want to learn quickly. And, and being one week in Silicon Valley is like being a quarter here. You learn yeah. so quickly from, from this environment. And you come back humbled and, and nervous, right? Mm -hmm. and I think that's really good. So, so in any case, you should clearly visit these clusters that are relevant to you. In our case, advertising technology is actually much more based out of uh, kind of big brands, the big ad techs, the huge successful ad tech firms are often in New York City. Yeah. Uh, so, so to us, that's probably a more interesting space. If in Europe, if I would start somewhere right now, I'd probably start in Berlin. They mm -hmm. seem to be boiling, uh, and clearly, you know, Henrik Berg, you know, Riemann oh, yeah. and, and like Sam Jung and and Wolfsch uh, did that with SoundCloud. So I think that's a good environment. Actually, better in London. London has they have to compete with talent from the banks, and the banks pay well. And it's hugely expensive. Yeah, I yeah. mean everything is expensive. And office yeah. is, is cheap in Berlin. So, so yeah. I have to go with Berlin, not because of the expenses, because I don't think that's a big problem, right? Finding people who want to do this, they will do it for low pay mm -hmm. anyway. So no, I was more thinking of living costs and. Yeah, sure, of course. But uh, so so Berlin seems cool. Uh, I think. What you should think about is leveraging your network. In my, my case, I've been around this uh, space for so, so long time, so I have a pretty good network. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, actually, I believe that, that for us it, it's worked out well, because me and Gustav, our founder and CEO, uh, have a great network already. Yeah. But if you're somewhere else, try to get somewhere where you can leverage a good network. Mm -hmm. Stockholm is fine if, if you necessarily want to be in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, actually try to do that even though it's hard for talent uh, Berlin in Europe and Silicon Valley in the world sure uh, I don't think you need to mm. but you might want to thank you do you have any like final things you want to say about Bert or uh, no a wizard of said BertCorp.com we're of course hiring uh, uh, there's some some good uh, I think we have some interesting positions for, for super talent and, and productive people. Uh, apart from that, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Yeah, uh, it's I fantastic talking. I think the, uh, what you're trying to do here 
with this is pretty cool. So I, I really hope you, you get successful because we need this attention. So. Yeah, I and I, I think I also thought about you just applying to take Crunch 50 without a company. And yeah. That's very unsweet. Here we like, you know, everything being signed sure, and sure. sealed. And that's interesting. I, I gave a talk a uh, month ago uh, uh, at a course for entrepreneurship and, and they had like, oh, when I start a company, it, I, I really don't really know how to apply with all these forms and blah blah blah. I'm like, what the hell are you want to register your company? Okay, so so have an idea, sell the idea, build a product. Once you send the invoice, that's when you do the company. Yeah. If you're not sending invoices, don't give a crap about that. Get a domain. That's you know ten dollars. That's all you need. <laughs> final, fantastic final words. Thank you so much, thank you. and thank for the opportunity to come and visit you in Gothenburg. Yeah. And next time, see you. Bye. Bye-bye.